All right. The Boosh. The Boosh, man. Well, did you trade first? Yes. Do the I, trade I think first. so. Just right. adding uh, Ilya Labushkin, 75% of his con- contract was retained by the Anaheim Ducks and the Carolina Hurricanes. But it cost them a third and a sixth to do it. So let's go to you first, JB. Well, I like it. I like it. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'm a, I'm a Boosh guy. When he was here, uh, you guys probably remember, I really like him as a player. I, you know, they, they had needed that when they got him a couple of years ago, and he was someone who really tried to light guys up. Um, the downside of it, of course, is that he tried to light guys up, and they'd get by him, and they'd have a scoring chance going the other way. But he is, you know, the Leafs so clearly had a need for someone who has a right shot, someone who's physical, someone who defends as a priority, someone who PKs. He does all those things. So in the absence of Tanev, if you go down the list of who is available, wasn't a ton to choose from. So I like it. I, uh, the acquisition acquisition cost doesn't really phase me. It's a third and 25. It's about what it costs yeah. you to demon yeah. at the deadline. Yeah, I, uh, that, that I'm not with you. I, I look at a third and a six for a rental again. And... Hey, I'm I'm the one screaming all in here. Yeah. So, but it, it it's not cheap. A third. No. Like you didn't want to give up a first, or the perception is that nobody wanted to give up a first, but everybody's all day long on the third for a rental. So, I mean, I am my point in all of this. Are we is sure that, they didn't want to give up a first? It's not that I wouldn't do it, but again, for everybody saying don't go all in, you're you're just you're just costing your picks. Yes, that's what all in is. Yeah, right? and, and to me, the but, the third and the sixth is not for Labushkin alone. It's it for better massive. Not be. No, it's massive retention too, right? Massive kick. They're paying six eighty seven for the guy. All I'm saying is that if you if you're going to start throwing away these picks, mm-hmm. then you better come up with something a lot bigger and a lot shinier than Labushkin. So if 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 you're telling me they're all in mm-hmm. and third and the six just a cost of doing business. Then I'm with you. Yeah. But if you stop at this trade in terms of still trying to nibble around the edges, and that's all Labushkin is, is a nibble around the edges. I get it. Yeah. Depth. I, I like him. Good ad. For you, sure. You need six, seven, eight quality defensemen if you think you're going to go to a conference final. So there it's good. Yeah. But I better see all in between now and Friday. Is it depth, though? Like, isn't he just going to go right to the top pair? That's the problem for me. Yeah. Right? Like, if they are going to make another trade, which you've mentioned, fine. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to get another right-hand shot D-man somewhere or again. Uh, they better. I, I agree. I think they, they, they better. I agree. It's just, to me, your big move can't be to add Labushkin to play with Morgan Riley. Right? And they added Luke Shen, and we were all wondering what he was going to be last year, and he ends up playing with, with Riley, and he plays really well, and he played like 14 minutes a night kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think Labushkin is is Luke Shen. I think Luke Shen's probably a better player than Labushkin is. I I don't want to hate it as much as I do. Like I I, I kind of like what he brings, but you I just, like it if there's more, Sammy. I just don't want him playing on the top pair, and it just feels Not like ideal. that's it. Just feels like that's exactly where we're headed. It that's, does. That's uh, what you know. I think it's me. protection against you know. Not getting the guy they want. Because I agree. I don't think they look at their team and go, we don't need another top pair guy. Labushkin's a top pair guy. They're not dumb. They don't think this guy who's been playing, you know, 17 minutes in Anaheim is a top pair guy. But if they can't get someone else, you have a body who can play with Riley, who can make a difference, who, you know, moves people into better positions. So instead of losing in five games to Florida, now you could lose in six. This is the dumbest thing ever, kid. So should they not get good players? Because it's not the one you want it to be. Like, you're talking about getting all-in guys. You need right... You need, they have 23rd JB, are, are, on the penalty uh, kill. Once again, are you just telling me that this is the start of much more coming? I and then so. we're with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, it if, it's, if this is really it in a nutshell on the blue line, yeah. then I'm with Sammy going, this is disappointing. For sure. But I just don't think you can make three trades when you make your first trade. It's your first trade. And, I, and I'm with you. I don't think Labushkin is a top pair guy, but to me, it's like they are 23rd on the penalty kill. They have no right shot D. They have mm-hmm. no physical players. It's a good they start. Win. It is. It's a start. And if you don't like the acquisition cost, I get it. It's it's a cost. It's a cost you could have used somewhere else. But to me, it's like, have you guys looked at the players who are available? 
there's there's no there's no names. I know, and that's that's a problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's. I just can't get over Tanf. I can't quit Tanf. Yeah, I just I it really, you know, like the, the the drop off between thinking you're gonna get Chris Tanf to like back to Labushkin. Yeah, it, it's a hurtful one. Like it's just I really. Not that I thought it was a lock that he was coming here. I clearly knew, but it's just the fact that it was taken away from you when it's just such a perfect fit and a real difference maker. I know. And now it's like the next option is Labushkin. That's think, the step I down th- here. I think in Eddie Murphy's Raw or Delirious, he talks about being a kid and wanting a McDonald's hamburger. This is my article today. Yes. He wants to go to McDonald's and his mom's like, we have hamburger meat at home. Yeah. And she goes to make like the Wonder Bread yeah. version of the hamburger. Yeah. That's the, Labushkin. And there's like green parts green in it. Green peppers uh, hanging out of it. I don't see the green parts <laughs> in the McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> I see my dad mix it up with like eggs and yeah. breadcrumbs. I'm like, what the hell is that? And actually, that's in Eddie Murphy's bit. He's like, I don't want an egg McMuffin, <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's like, you you end up with this burger and you're going that's not quite what i wanted <laughs> they're familiar with them he's played with morgan in the past mm-hmm. that helps for sure i, mean, I listen i i get i'm sticking up for it because i see what they're they just don't have options but it's not a perfect fit why don't we listen to well, um, them tell us about it unless you yes, have something else no to add. absolutely do you want to do tree first or, or keith uh Tree. Let's get tree. He made the trade. Let's get the GM number one there on Ilya Labushkin. Tree. We're, we're short in the right side, so you look throughout the marketplace, and number one is determining what's available, right? There's lots of names people want to bounty oh, about, but you got to separate, you know, reality from 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 non-reality. And and when we look at Ilya, a few things. Um, obviously, there's a familiarity with with the team. I wasn't here with him before, but in speaking, I spoke to a few of the players, obviously speaking a lot with Sheldon, the coaching staff. There's a familiarity of where he fit in last year, as a, or when his last time here as a teammate. Um, they spoke you know, glowingly about a teammate, how he fit in with the group. Um, but then stylistic and profile-wise, you're looking, you know, from my end, somebody on the right side, and, and one of the things that, you know, we need to improve upon is 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 stopping plays, killing plays. You know, he's got the ability to, to kill plays. And then obviously being able to do the deal the way we did it and the number that he came in at provides us some flexibility. So it adds to our depth. It, it gives us a body in a position of need um, and allows us still to, to seek other opportunities over the course of the next week. All We're right. going shopping. Seek other opportunities is encouraging. Where he fit in last time is not encouraging. Yes. And him calling him depth helps my heart a little bit. Yeah. I, that, you know, he, they're not done. But I, I just have to measure what we know now against yeah. what Labushkin is. Two more bodies, changeover. Do, is that going to be enough? Like, that's probably what they're looking at, right? Probably a forward and another D or Listen, yeah. two forwards or... They need another stud on the blue line. What does that mean? It means a legit top four. Yeah, they're There's just not. They're not good enough on the. They're just not. No, I mean my only comparable to being able to win. So first off, I think it's a heavily flawed year in the NHL, where I don't look at any teams as unbeatable. But the only comparable is maybe the 2017 Penguins with Dumoulin and Mata and, you know, whatever, where the whole thing is they just flip pucks in the neutral zone, keep it safe, and you have your elite Cole, forward Ian talent, Cole. Ian Cole, yeah. Hainsey. And who's Dumoulin on the Leafs right now? And who's Cole on the Leafs right now? Because mm. I see smaller, tinier, lighter guys. See, I don't see that at all. I think you got that wrong. The Leafs now are Benoit, McCabe, Labushkin. Those are three guys who hit first as a priority. So no team has okay. six guys who hit. So it's a few guys in the lineup now who want to run into you anyway. But mm. Yeah. I'll take okay. the guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that one for sure. Yeah, they... they uh, Benoit has added a lot. Yeah. Uh, McCabe has been more physical in the last three weeks than I've seen since coming he looks here. Confident, yeah. so yeah, there's much bigger physical presence than we've seen in the past. Because you you're know, right. Lilligren's not going to do it. Riley's not going to do it, and Brody's not going to do okay. it. Okay. So, and I think you know, on the positive side of this, I, two part take here from this is that. I have a hard time, you know, because I, I did a post-game thing last night, and then we did a pod talking about the trade afterwards. And I just, I didn't go on Twitter. I didn't do any of the reading before I went on. And 
analytics guys buried this. Despise <laughs> Labushkin. Yeah. Like he is a the what's the opposite of an analytics styling? I saw people call him the worst defenseman in the NHL. Yeah, like people hate this guy. Yeah. And part of me was like, oh, that worries me. But part of the, me is like, I wish I just was a hockey fan now without Twitter. Like when I was a kid, I watch hockey and it's like, oh, that guy's good, that guy's bad. I, like I can make my own decisions. But I feel like it's so I'm so not influenced, but I just see that and I'm measuring it against this. And it's so like the reason why we call people influencers on yeah, no, this but like, stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. No, but he, yeah, but like right. it influenced me. I'm like, oh, these guys are saying he's the worst. He's got to be the worst. But I'm like, can I make my own decision when I see him play? And yeah. I've seen him play before. Yeah, yeah, the answer is yes, you can, but you got to shut your phone off. But here's yeah. the thing, Kipper. They all said the exact same thing about Simone Benoit, where Benoit was unplayable. Benoit had awful numbers. Benoit was a guy that was just completely, you know, uh, not an option for the Leafs, and they've developed him and put him in a good posi position to succeed, and he's becoming a really important guy for them. Yeah. So maybe that's something that can happen with with uh, Labushkin, but mm. I don't know. I think guys like Labushkin and Benoit, who are not play driving guys, they don't skate it out, pass it out, whatever. They when they get on bad teams, they get stuck because yeah. no one breaks it out for them, and they just get the if they let's say they stop a play in the D zone like Tree's talking about it then doesn't get going the other way. Mm -hmm. When you're on a good team, you get a stop. Sometimes some guys can actually make a play for you, and it works. His time with the Leafs, he was really good at uh, defending the blue line, hitting, blocking shots, like stick checks. I remember him being able to snap a breakout pass a little bit too, I remember. He, he checks out a lot better. His time in Toronto does than when he's on bad teams. Buffalo and yeah. Anaheim. You may have to just wait in the summer to get a stud to back up Morgan Riley ultimately. I mean, it's never going to happen. Forsling is a free agent. UFA. Forsling. Forsling's a free agent. Montour's a free agent. Brett Pesci's a free agent. UFAs. Mm. There's, 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 a, there's a decent list this summer. Do you summer. think you could go to a Carolina now and talk about Pesci? I know where they're at in yeah, there. Yeah, I think you can. If you're like, hey, yes. you know. The answer is yes. If you want to do something bigger. Maybe that's what Vancouver. <laughs> I'm, I'm connecting dots. That's all right. They talked about Pedersen. Listen, you have to have these conversations. Brett Pesci is not resigning in Carolina unless something drastically changes in the next little while. Mm -hmm. They're not prepared to pay this guy. So why wouldn't the Leafs knock on the door and say, you're not keeping him. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily want to lose him for nothing here. We'll take him off your hands and let's talk. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, interesting. Man. I mean, that's a difference maker. For sure. Right. Do we I, want to hear Keith on, on Labushkin? Sure. Yeah. Is that the, the right place yeah, to go next? Let's sure. go to the coach on the trade. I think it helps us for sure. Are we obviously familiar with him? And, and when he's uh, when he's come in in the past, uh, he helped us both in what he brings, uh, the type of player that he is. He's uh, ultra competitive, physical, uh, strong, doesn't back down to anyone or any situation. Like He, he plays the game hard and honest. And uh, yeah, obviously the right shot. We've, we've talked enough about that to know the importance of that. And I think that uh, in itself, I think, just sort of allows some other things to settle into place, which I think uh, uh, is where the additional boost uh, comes from. So there's part of it is, is, the, is, the, is what Bush uh, himself brings. And the other part of it is how it impacts the rest of the, the decor. So uh, you know, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a good move and, and we're happy to have him.